There's this uh, question about, uh, I read it on an atheist article, uh, which said that, um, like when uh, Allah had created the Garden of uh, Eden, He put in Adam and Eve there, and, uh, but because they broke the rule, as in they had the fruit of, uh, I don't know what it is, they had the fruit, uh, which was forbidden, uh, they were banished from the garden, uh, they were thrown out, and uh, because of which, it was told that uh, like you have to work for your daily bread. You need to work and only then will you earn to have your uh, daily bread. Likewise, it was also told that uh, women, they would, uh, their pain in pregnancy would increase. It's like till now, the same thing is happening. We have to work hard, we have to struggle. We have to do everything necessary to earn a daily bread. And uh, the same thing with the women, like they are dying in pregnancy, their pain is increased. Uh, why is it that uh, if Allah Himself had punished them so badly till date, uh, they are like with the same punishment? How is it that it is an example for others to forgive other people when Allah Himself has not forgiven or guide me right? Sisters asked a very good question. She rightly said that what you're quoting, sister, is about the Bible. What you're saying is mentioned in the Bible that Adam and Eve, may Allah be pleased with them. When they were in the Garden of Eden, they disobeyed the commandment of Almighty God. It's mentioned in the Bible. And it's mentioned in Genesis chapter number 3, verse number 23, that Almighty God punished them and He threw them out of the Garden. And Almighty God says in Genesis chapter 3, verse number 16, that you women, because you have disobeyed God, you shall give birth to children in pain and your desire shall be that of the husband. So according to the Bible, pregnancy is a curse on the woman. This is what you're quoting is the Bible. And I agree with you that how can God not forgive? In Christianity, the full blame in the Bible is put on the woman, Eve, Eve, Eve. May Allah be pleased with her. In Quran, if you read, there is not a single place in the Quran where the blame is put only on Eve. The blame is equally put on Adam and Eve both. May Allah be pleased with them. If you read in the Quran, it's mentioned in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 19 to 27, that Adam and Eve, may Allah be pleased with them, both of them, they disobeyed God. Both of them, they repented and both were forgiven. The blame is put equally on them. There is not a single verse in the Quran where the blame is only put on Eve. May Allah be pleased with her. But there is a verse in the Quran in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 121, which says that Adam, peace be upon him, he disobeyed God. So there is one verse which speaks only about Adam, peace be upon him. But as a whole, if you analyze, the Quran puts the blame on both of them, Adam and Eve. Both of them. May Allah be pleased with them. In the Bible, the blame is only put on women. And because of that, Almighty God says, you shall bear children in pain and your desire will be that of the husband. So pregnancy according to the Bible is a curse. But if you read the Quran, pregnancy is not a curse. Pregnancy uplifts the woman. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 1, respect the womb that bore you. Furthermore, Quran says, in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 14, and Surah Akaf, chapter number 46, verse number 15, that we have enjoined on the human beings to be kind to the parents. In travail upon travail did the mother bore you, and in pain did she give you birth. So here we realize that the Quran says that we have to respect your parents, especially your mother. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of Adab, Chapter number two, hadith number two, a man approaches Prophet Muhammad and asks him that who deserves the maximum love and companionship in this world? So the Prophet replies, your mother. The man asked after that too. The Prophet again says your mother. The man asked after that too. Again the Prophet says your mother. The man asked after that too. Then for the fourth time the Prophet says your father. That means 75%. Three-fourths of the love and companionship goes to your mother. 25%, one-fourth goes to the father. In short, mother gets the gold medal, she gets the silver medal, as well as the bronze medal. The father has to be satisfied with the mere consolation prize.
So these are the teachings of Islam. In Islam, pregnancy uplifts the woman. And I agree with you, once Almighty God has forgiven the human beings, how can he keep on punishing them? So this is the difference between Islam and Christianity, sister. So are you convinced with the answer? Yes, definitely. So do you want to accept Islam now? Yes. Do you believe that there is one God? Yes, I do. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger? Yes, I do. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No. Are you doing out of your own free will? Yes. Are you doing out of your own conviction? Yes. Is there anyone giving you a bribe? No. <laughs> so do you, inshallah, so it's in Arabic and you can repeat it. Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That. That. Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad. Is. Is. The messenger. The messenger. And servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. MashaAllah. You are a Muslim. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to guide you and help you guide your family members also and to give you the best in this world as well as in the next life. And inshallah, grant you Jannah.